hello friends today in this video we will discuss about the basic steps in cloning usually a clone means a replica of something so cloning a gene means we are producing a multiple copy of that particular gene and uh, why do we need to do cloning because if when 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 we want to study about a particular gene or uh, when we want to produce a protein in large amount in that case we we usually do this process there are several other applications that we will discuss in my next videos but in this video we will discuss only about the basic steps in cloning okay so let's discuss about the steps one by one so the first step in cloning is the purification of the foreign DNA so let us suppose you want to study about a particular gene okay let us suppose you want to study about a particular gene and this gene is present in the genome of a bacteria now what we have to do is that we have to purify that okay we have to purify that genome from that bacteria okay once you will purify this genome we have will have to isolate your gene of interest from this genomic DNA so one thing you can do is that you can use the online analyzer tool where you can see the restriction site flanking your gene of interest let's say eco r1 and bam h1 are flanking your gene of interest so let's say eco r1 this is equal R1 and let's say this one is BAM H1. BAM. And BAM H1 and equal R1 are flanking our gene of interest. So we will we will cleave this um, DNA with these two restriction enzyme and we will get our fragment that we want to study okay and we also need a plasmid vector where we can insert this gene and we can study about that particular gene or we can produce a multiple copy of this particular gene so this plasmid must have certain features such as it must contain the selectable marker region the origin of replication that will allow it to replicate independently and the multiple cloning site this multiple cloning site usually contains several restriction sites which will facilitate the entry of our gene of interest now this mcs or the multiple cloning site must also contains the same restriction sites that we see in this flanking region okay so the similar restriction sites must be present in this mcs because the restriction in the sticky ins that we will generate after cleaving it with the restriction enzyme must be complementary to the sticky ends of this vector so that they can anneal with each other and further we will add ligase and they will completely ligate it and we will get a recombinant DNA okay so the restriction site that is flanking the region of interest must be present in the MCS region because the sticking that will be generated will help them to anneal because of the complementary sequence present in at both the ends and that will ultimately help us to get the recombinant DNA when we will add DNA like this okay so after getting the recombinant DNA we will transform this vector into E. coli cell now in E. coli cells to ensure that our vector uh, or that, that, that E. coli has been transformed with this 
plasmid we will see or we will grow our bacterial cell in a plate containing antibiotic now as i have said you that the plasmid contains a selectable marker the selectable marker let us suppose in this here case is a gene for antibiotic re resistance let us suppose ampicillin resistant genes it contains now if it contains ampicillin resistant genes it means it can easily grow on a plate containing ampicillin because it has already am ampicillin resistant genes now if our cell has been successfully transformed with this vector only cell containing those ampicillin resistant genes will will be able to grow on this plate rest of the cells which are not transformed with this plasmid will not be able to grow on this plate because they will be not having ampicillin resistant genes and in presence of ampicillin they will die but how will you ensure that whether the plasmid that has been transformed successfully contains our insert okay now to ensure that whether your plasmid contains insert or not you can do colony pcr okay colony pcr in colony pcr what we do we will select the colony and we will make a pcr mix we will add our colony okay colony pcr we will add our colony to that pcr mixture and we will and we and and, and the primer in this case will be designed complementary to the insert region okay so that if this insert has been successfully ligated to the our vector then only we will get a pcr product and in case if 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 our gene of interest has not been inserted into a vector we will get no bands after pcr so after growing the plate on a selection medium we will do colony pcr to ensure that the bacteria that has been transformed with the plasmid also contains our foreign insert and in case where we where we will get a negative result for pcr in those case this plasmid has been transformed into bacterial cell but they are missing this foreign insert because two things can happen the first thing is that the plasmid can self ligate with each other and in the second case the plasmid may contain our gene of interest so i have summarized the entire steps in cloning the first step is the purification of the vector dna and the purification of our target dna that contains our gene of interest in the second step you will digest the plasmid dna with the restriction enzyme and the target dna with the restriction enzyme so as i have said you you can also pcr amplify your dna or our region of interest where no restriction site is present you can simply do a pcr where you will use a primer and the restriction site will be present in the overhang of this primer okay in most cases they also use this alkaline phosphatase which remove the 5 prime phosphate which will not allow this self ligation okay so this alkaline phosphate is usually removed the 5 prime phosphate to ensure no self ligation happen within the vector so after this digestion you will ligate the target dna with our vector dna by the addition of your ligation enzyme dna ligase then you will transform into e coli then you will plate onto agar with antibiotic because our vector usually contain a marker okay then colony will come onto the plate and to identify those plasmid which are recombinant you can do colony pcr or you can 
isolate the plasmid and you can cleave it with the restriction enzyme and you can run on agarose gel where you can see that you are getting two bands one for the vector and the second for the insert so these are the process from where from which you can ensure your plasmid contains your gene of fragment or not so this is the basic steps in cloning i hope you guys have completely understood so please like and don't forget to share thank you